uh, you know exercise reduces your body fat. But today, I would like to revisit the, the question. Why you exercise, you can reduce your body fat? There are two hypotheses. The first one is fat burning during and after exercise. That is the reason to reduce your body fat. The second hypothesis, the exercise makes skeletal muscle a favorable storage site of carbon source against adipose tissues. So that means you have the competition of the muscle against the adipose tissues. And that is the reason to reduce your body fat. Which one is more popular? Which hypothesis is more popular? Takže odpověď to answer from audience is the, the first one. Yes, uh, if, you, if you go to United States and UK, the most, most of the people will tell you the first one is the mechanism. But today I'm going to supply you the scientific evidence to tell you that there is no scientific evidence support the first one. And most of the scientific evidence support the second one. Okay, the reason that the first one is popular is because exercise looks like an energy consuming behavior. And this concept has been translated into the exercise is burn, fat burning. Okay, but actually if you are in the area of exercise physiology or nutrition, you might already know that the fat is the major fuel during rest condition. And exercise is using energy primarily rely on carbohydrate. Okay, so the first scientific evidence I would like to show you is this one. If you look at, this is the non esterified fatty acid concentration from two sites. The first site is abdominal venous blood. You know abdominal venous blood means the fatty acid from adipose fat cell. And if you look at the second side, it's forearm venous blood. And you know forearm is mostly muscle, okay? And you can see on the dashed line on the left side is when you are not having meal. Under this condition, you have a high concentration of the fatty acid from adipose fat cell is exporting fatty acid out. And if you look at the muscle end, you see the fatty acid concentration drops significantly. So this graph gives you the idea that when you are not having meal, you are not eating, the fat cell is exporting fatty acid out as a 24 hours routine. And the major consumer is the muscle. Okay, so if you ask you a question, if our adipose tissues is dumping fatty acid out as a 24 hours routine, then why so many people still get fat? Okay, if you look at this graph on the right side of the dashed line, that is when you have the meal. Okay, you can see the difference between abdominal venous blood and the forearm venous blood, the fatty acid concentration difference disappears. So that means about one hour after the meal is the time when you refill the carbon source back to the adipose tissues. So although the adipose tissues is throwing out the fatty acid all the time, but when you have the meal, if the meal come back to the adipose tissues is more than what you spent, then you get fat accumulation. But if the carbon source return to the adipose tissues less, then you get the adipose tissues smaller and smaller. And the best way to do it is to have the muscle extract more carbon source, and that will lead to the carbon source return to adipose tissues become smaller. Okay, so uh, let me just rephrase one more time. So if you want to have the lean body, you don't want to have the accumulation, fat accumulation in your abdominal site. The best way to do it is 
right after meal, when the tie, the carbon source, is returning to adipose tissues, you want to have the muscle to uptake the carbon source. And therefore, the carbon return to adipose tissues is going to be smaller, and therefore you are less likely to accumulate fat. Okay, so from here you know the muscle is important. So I would like to supply three more evidence to tell you that if you are able to increase your muscle growth, you are going to reduce your body fat. Okay, the first evidence is to knock out the gene, it's called myostatin. Myostatin is the gene that will suppress the muscle growth. So if you knock out this gene, the people is going to have the fast muscle growth. Okay, if you reduce, if you overexpress the c ski overexpress the c ski would also cause the muscle growth. Or if you in, inject the interleukin-15. Interleukin-15, by the way, is the cytokine that increase during resistance exercise. So when you do weight training, interleukin-15 is increasing, which would cause the muscle hypertrophy. So all these three conditions will cause increased muscle growth. And this will in turn reduce your body fat without exercise. Okay. So now you know skeletal muscle dictate the fat mass, okay? And you also know that the time to supply the carbon source is very important. And now if you look at the evidence right here, if you have a two kind, if you have a, uh, the exercise, resistant exercise for 10 weeks, and you give the same meal, but at different time, you give the meal either pre and post exercise, or you give the meal in the evening, uh, morning and evening, which is far away from the exercise time, you will eventually find that the body composition is going to be different, okay? So if you give the meal before and after exercise, 10 weeks later, you have the fat reduction, significant fat reduction, at the same time, the carbon source is going to be in the lean body tissues. But if you give the meal, you delay the meal to the morning and evening, the fat reducing effect disappears and the muscle recovery is also less. Okay, if you look at the animal data, it shows you the consistent result. So this is two group of the animal. R represent right after exercise. The L uh, represent late. So you have exercise right here, and you have two meal, okay? Exactly the energy balance study like the previous one. And the only difference is one of the meal is delayed after exercise. Okay, if you look at the result, the R group, oh, sorry, if you look at the R group, right after exercise group, compared to L, so this is the total muscle mass. You have higher muscle mass, and you have lower body fat compared to the L group. So all this is to say that whether or not you will be obese is really depending on whether your muscle is willing to uptake the carbon source. And the meal time is very important in relation to exercise because that would determine whether or not the, the muscle will extract the carbon source away from adipose tissues. Okay, now I'm going to move to uh, the evidence that we know exercise is essential in preventing obesity, but the evidence would tell you this is very unlikely because of the fat burning. Okay, the first question I would like to ask, there are two, st four states, rest, 
moderate exercise intensity, mild and high, medium intensity and high intensity. If you look at the evidence in the past, which one is more effective to reduce your body fat? So it's very obvious in the past. If you look at the reference, most of the reference support high intensity and medium intensity are the effective one. Low intensity and rest, it just cannot reduce your body fat. But if you look at the contribution of the fat for exercise, you can see as the exercise intensity increases, the great part, the great portion is the fat contribution. It's reducing as the exercise increased intensity. Okay, if you look at closely from here, as exercise intensity increased from 25% to 85% VO2 max, the energy comes from four parts, muscle glycogen, muscle triglyceride, plasma fatty acid, and plasma glucose. The, the, the plasma fatty acid is mostly come from abdominal fat. But as you can see, when exercise intensity increases, the contribution of the abdominal fat is actually decreasing. But if you ask the question again, which exercise is more effective to reduce your body fat? 85%. And 25% is not going to reduce your body fat. So this is the first evidence to tell you that exercise is not fat burning, but exercise is effective to reduce your body fat. So why this concept is important? It's because if you believe the fat reducing effect of exercise training is mediated by fat burning, then you will recommend aerobic exercise instead of anaerobic exercise. Okay, now I'm going to show you the evidence that aerobic exercise is more effective to reduce your body fat compared to aerobic exercise. You want to compare then at the same energy, same amount of energy consumption, then you can compare. So you cannot compare which one is better without control the total energy consumption, okay? Okay. If you look at the evidence right here, <clears throat> three conditions. One is control, that is no exercise. The SSE represents steady state exercise, which is 60% VO2 max for 45 minutes running. And the HIIT means high intensity intermittent exercise, which you sprint for a second and then stop for twice of the time and do it 60 times. And this is, HIIE is obviously anaerobic exercise. And steady state exercise is obviously aerobic exercise. When they are consuming the same energy, if you look at the fat reduction over time, you can see only HIIE reduce body fat. So you know that fat burning require oxygen, right? You all know that, right? So if you exercise and you reduce the oxygen availability, it will block the fat burning, right? So you will expect the fat accumulation. So one way to test this hypothesis is to exercise and recover under low oxygen concentration and see the outcome. Okay, so this is the hypothesis to be tested. If fat burning effect of exercise training is due to fat burning, then decreasing oxygen supply should cause fat accumulation. So we have tested this hypothesis by moving the Singapore swimming team from Singapore to China High Altitude Training Center. And what happened is, if you look at only three weeks, very short time, three weeks only. You can see the fat mass reduced by 11% in attitude and muscle increased one by 1.5%. 1 
and without changing exercise, total volume. Okay, we found that if you put someone into hypoxia, the blood is going to distribute into the muscle. So this is what we see. If you reduce the oxygen saturation in blood by about 6%, you will see the more blood is going to the muscle. And when you eat, you, you, you have the insulin and you have the carbon source. It's going to move more into the skeletal muscle. And that is the reason that if you go to hypoxia, then reduce the fat burning, but you still get smaller in fat mass. Okay, I, now I'm going to supply another evidence to convince you that despite exercise will increase the basal, basal metabolic rate, but fat oxidation remains unaltered. So this is, this is the, uh, the, the uh, experiment. We have three, three conditions. Control means no exercise. LI means low intensity exercise, high intensity exercise. As you can see, the 24 hours total energy consumption is 500 calories more compared to without exercise. But if you ask the question, the increase of the total energy consumption, is that because of the higher fat oxidation or higher carbohydrate oxidation? This is the answer. On the left side is 24 hours carbohydrate oxidation. It's increasing as exercising intensity increase. The fatty acid oxidation remain controlled equal to low intensity exercise. It's equal to high intensity exercise. So this evidence, again, gives you the idea that exercise is not fat burning despite exercise is effective to reduce your body fat. Okay, uh, let me conclude by saying that exercise make muscle more competitive for energy storage against adipose tissues. And it's more related to redistribution of the carbon-based fuel among muscle and adipose tissues. And evidence does not favor fat burning effect. Aerobic exercise seems to be better than anaerobic exercise. Meal time is crucial. If you delay the meal, it will kill the fat reducing effect of exercise training. Intensity is very important. Increased exercise intensity becoming more anaerobic, but it's more e effective to reducing your body fat. The reason is if you increase the exercise intensity, you are challenging more muscle fibers and those muscle fiber is going to attract more carbon source away from the adipose tissues. However, I'm sorry. The last one, okay. However, the dietary control is still important because that is where the carbon source come from. Okay, the content today is actually published online in the Canadian Journal of Physiology and Pharmacology by invitation. So you have the newest information online. You are very welcome to, to download the paper. Thank you very much. Takže dámy a pánové, děkujeme panu profesorovi Kuovi a skvělému překladateli panu doktoru Martinu Musálkovi. Dámy a thank pánové, profesor Kuo a Martin Musálek. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah.